that. And there's no one that does what we do, Tim, that don't have storms, that don't have life experiences that they can share to help people. And, and really, that was my motivation. Yeah. And um, so I did it, and it was just amazing how many it resonated with so many people. All right, so you already gave me way too much right there. Here like, we go. So, so first of all, I'm, I'm resonating. I, I love the word graduation mm-hmm. for yeah. Marcus. Yeah. Um, we just celebrated my dad's life. Right. And I had all these words, but graduation wasn't one of them. And so I'm grateful for his yeah. graduation. Yeah. And he graduated. Uh, he did graduate. He finished. He finished. And he did finish. He left us with nothing left to do. Like that yeah. was actually my, the eulogy for for him that day yeah. was there was nothing left to do. Yeah. And um, with that graduation came more responsibility for you, though. Mm-hmm. And you just talked about it. Um, I see everything in pictures, Joni. So when you said I, I wanted to set the record straight on this and then God started showing me, well, talk about this storm as well. Mm-hmm. What I saw in my in my mind's eye was you pulling on a thread mm-hmm. of a sweater and yeah. just thinking that was going to come off. And it just kept <laughs> going around. Yeah. And so so as you started doing this, yeah. were you surprised at what you recollected? Cause, cause when you mm-hmm. forty years of ministry, yeah, sometimes it can for some people it can feel mm-hmm. like one big storm, yeah. <laughs> right? They can't remember yeah. any good days or whatever. Yeah, I was and, five years old when I started. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you are a child prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> they went to kindergarten. I started ministry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what were you surprised at the the storms that you started to recall and? Were you surprised at what you put on paper? You know, um, as I begin to recount some of the the early storms, like building the first Christian television station in the history of the state of Alabama, in Montgomery, Alabama. Wow. You think about where our nation was divided yep. and and it was really hard because it was a it's a um, you know, it's a small T V market. Yeah. And where do you go to school to learn how to build a Christian TV station? I talk about that in the book, how we did it the wrong way, and then we did it the right way because we started with a transmitter that was in the garbage dump. Wow. And people in television know, or, or about TV stations know, that you have to have a transmitter and a tower, an antenna, a transmission line, all of that. And um, But we were there for seven years, and um, you know, just writing about that again, and just remembering those very small beginnings and how important that was. And because a lot of people see us now, they see the Daystar Television Network goes around the world. They're like, you know, I want to do what you do. And I'm like, well, let's just trot back, you know, mm. 40 years ago. Because I always say that if I hadn't walked through Montgomery those seven years that I couldn't have walked into Dallas, where we eventually would, would end up building a station and then 110 TV stations and satellites around the world. But yeah, I mean, going back and rehearsing those stories and just, it was like a notch in my belt with, with, with every storm, yeah. you know, and it's not that I had, you know, a trillion storms and no blessing and no happiness and no right. joy. It was, I had much more, uh, there were many more good things that happened yeah. than the storms, but the storms are real yeah, for and sure. the storms are where you grow and the storms are where you learn to trust God. That's right. And it's that refining fire. It's that character building that takes place, you know, in the storm. So, um, yeah, it was emotional. It was cathartic, I think, going back and writing. But especially when I got to the more recent storms, you know, it, it was it was hard. But, again, I wanted to share the story. I think for me, Tim, I had to get to the place with Marcus's graduation that I understood that he had run his race Mm -hmm. because, you know, at first you're thinking, well, the whole world's praying for him. How Mm. could this happen? Mm. And surely God's not finished. Right. But I remember there was a, I got thousands of condolence letters, but there was a, a letter from a, a a Canadian nurse. And there would be just some of those letters. You just feel like God's speaking to you through those letters. Absolutely. I remember she wrote and she said, I was so angry at God at why he allowed Marcus to go home. And she said, I went into my prayer closet and she said, and I talked directly to God because that's how we talk to each other. Hmm. And, and then she said, this is what God said to me. And it's almost like these words jumped off the page to me. And she said this, she said, God said, if I am, then you have to know he is here rejoicing with me. Hmm. 
and nothing nor anyone could have plucked him out of my hand, and I have not left Daystar without a leader. And so it was almost like the voice of God speaking to me. There were other people that, that shared things, and my secretary would say, you got to read this, or you got to read this one. And it's like none of these people knew each other, and so many of them were speaking the same encouraging word to me. Yeah. And I knew it was God saying, okay, you got this, you can do this. So I had to deal with the fact that Marcus finished his race. Yeah. Because God's timing may not be our timing. Absolutely. And so um, to just be like, okay, he was about to celebrate 50 years of ministry. Yeah. And we were about to celebrate 40 years of marriage. And although I thought we had another 25 years, God said, uh, this is his well done. Yeah. And he had done an incredible work. He yeah. had started preaching when he was 15 years old. Yeah. And, um, and God had used him greatly. So... I think that was the important thing for me is to is to be at peace about that because there are people that are listening that, you know, you've lost a loved one, you've yeah. lost a spouse, you've lost a son or daughter, and you have to, the, you have to understand that we don't always understand, and it's okay to ask God questions. That's right. But I don't think it's okay to question God. Like mm -hmm. one has this posture and one has this posture. Mm -hmm. So I came to God many times with this posture. Mm -hmm. I remember laying on the driveway. This is a good picture for you. Marcus and I would lay on the front driveway because the sun sets in the front yard. Hmm. And we'd go out on the driveway and lay and sometimes watch the sunset. He'd been gone about four or five months. And I was laying there and I was just like, God, like, I'm not questioning you, but I do have a couple questions. <laughs> and I said, you know, um, did you think about this? <laughs> right. And did you think about that? Right. It's like you're questioning the creator of the universe, yeah. right? And uh, I remember the only thing he said to me, and he, he has consistently said this to me in my life, is trust me.